Knock at the Cabin. This is a new film by M. Night Shyamalan. It's based on a novel from 2018 and it follows a family who are on holiday in a cabin and they get approached by four strangers and these four strangers tell them that the apocalypse is coming and in order to stop it, the family need to sacrifice one of their own. When I saw the trailer for this a while back, I thought that is a very strange concept. And when I watch the film, it's the same, it's the same case. It's a very just a very, very strange concept. There's not really much else you can say about it. It's strange, it's weird, it's odd. It's an odd idea. The front man of this group of strangers is played very well here by Dave Bautista and he claims that bad things will happen like natural disasters, viruses, planes falling from the sky, etc. If this family doesn't make a sacrifice. Of course, the family react to this like any normal person would. What a load of horseshit. And for that reason, it makes this thing believable because of the way this family is reacting the actions they take out the things they say that you know they, they all think it's just a load of shit and you can really side with them because of that because of how ridiculous it sounds performances were very solid here you know especially from you know the little child actress she was really really good here and you know you kind of start off the film with her so you know it was like a, a very strong into introduction and you know dave batista was solid as he always is in every movie. I think he was probably the star of this film here, but there's going to be a few faces you recognize in this movie and uh, everyone put in, you know, a, a good shift. I got to say tension was presented effectively here. There are several shots that are really really close up allowing us to really feel the emotion coming from these characters as it's just basically a headshot and they're the only thing you see in the shot and the fact it's always limiting what we see behind them whether there is something behind them or not but the fact that it's always limiting that just adds to the tension and the suspense as with any suspense or thriller movie it's very dependent on the build-up of the suspense it just gradually making it more tense and more tense and keeping the intrigue going this film does that very well it's very solid for the intrigue i was intrigued from pretty much start to finish i would say uh you know I, I was really invested to see how this story was gonna pan out how it was gonna finish and you know there was some pretty tense sequences here that will have your heart racing a little bit so kudos to the movie for that because you know, i gotta say as a viewer i was i was kind of not actually sitting on the edge of my seat but i i felt that way i felt like i was really invested in what was going on on screen and getting lost in the movie at times but of course with suspense and thriller movies the other major factor is the payoff of the movie the twist the conclusion the end that is very very important to any suspense or thriller movie because it kind of can make or break it the conclusion to this film kind of did neither for me it's an ending that you could have predicted and therefore it isn't very shocking or impactful when it does happen as i said the concept of this film is just strange the idea that this random family have to kill one of their family members in order to prevent the end of the world because a group of strangers told them so. You may think the movie will explain why this is happening, but this film just doesn't really delve too much into the how or the why of it all. We get vague explanations as to why this group of strangers, you know, foresaw the end of the world and why this particular family are the family that have been chosen, but it's still not really enough as a viewer to really understand why everything is happening. It almost seemed like an impossible task with this film. I'm not sure if the novel delved much deeper into the how and why of this whole scenario, but this movie did feel like it had some plot holes. It felt like it had some missing elements and some unanswered questions. But this is not a bad movie. It's very well done and very well acted. And as a whole, it's just it put together very well. The editing's very good. The camera works very good. You know, I like a lot of elements of this movie i don't think the production side of things have any flaws but it's just a weird plot it's the sort of plot that i think if i sat for hours trying to think of like a great way to end this film i wouldn't be able to come up with anything because i just feel like it's impossible to really round this story off in an effective way but if you're intrigued i would say go and watch this movie because it, it's not bad the quality aspect is there it's just strange i'm between ratings on this one i want to say 6.5 i want to say 7 one sounds too low one sounds too high so for the first time ever i'm going to go in the middle i'm going to give knock at the cabin a 6.75 out of 10 i will not be doing that again that is not something i'm going to be doing often i'm just really you know you know when 6.5 sounds shit and then 7 sounds good I just think it's right there in the middle. But in terms of the rewatchability rating, I wouldn't watch this again. I don't think it serves much of a purpose.
purpose to ever watch again, but you know, a one and done, absolutely fine. If you've seen Knock at the Cabin, please let me know what you think about it. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.